With all the recreational opportunities we have in South Florida, hiking and camping might not be the first things that come to mind. Hi, I'm Chris Temke. Welcome to Exploring Florida. Today, I'm with members of the Florida Trail Association, and my guest, Phil Winicki, has been with the Suncoast chapter since it was started. Phil's going to show me the story behind the wonderful hiking trails that we have in Florida. Along the way, we may pick up a tip or two about camping. And if you think that camping is only for the younger generation, stay with me. I'll bet you'll be surprised. Well, I found my first trail marker, and if I follow these, I'm not going to get lost, but I will find Phil. I'll see you in a few moments. Portions of the production costs for exploring Florida are provided by the Laley Development Corporation, environmentally sensitive neighbors in Southwest Florida's building industry since 1964. Laley is proud to bring Exploring Florida to public television. back out to uh, do some more work after lunch today and we're changing locations. We'll get back in our cars and, and drive down to another location and go in and uh, maintain the established trail. This is your, this is your work group here? Well, this is uh, the part of the work group that showed up on a rainy day. Uh, is, we really expected about twice this number, but uh, we come down one weekend a month and work here in Lyaka River there, State Park uh, on the 39 trail, miles of trail that are here. Is it, and this part of the Florida Trail System? This is part of the Florida Trail System. This is Section 4W, 4 West of the Florida Trail. Okay, what are we going to do today? Well, we've been doing some lopper and machete work. Uh, we discovered a place that's pretty well overgrown, and uh, he was going to put everybody here in that uh, one area and see if we can cut the palm, metal, or the palm fronds back and, and the overhead uh, growth, the no, vines particularly, are, are, are trying to close off the trail. Uh, the mower has been through there. We've, we've mowed the stuff on the ground, but this is everything things yeah, growing up off machete, the ground that the mowers wouldn't reach. Uh, it takes a lot of hand work. It takes a lot of hand work. I'll tell you what, as soon as, uh, as, soon as he gets done, we'll, we'll get going, okay? That sounds good. Let's see what else we got to do. It's real thick there? Huh? It's real thick there? Yeah, the, the trail is pretty well overgrown. It's kind of the palmetto is starting to arbor and arch over the trail. Palmettos? Some of the palmettos, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, as well as the gallberry and some other sorts of bushes. I don't know whose name I don't know. Yeah, they probably will camera. never learn. But uh, there's, there's quite a job to be done, so it's going to take all of us to get it. It's take probably two hours to get through the short area. It's only maybe 500 to 1,000 feet long. So everybody's ready. Ready? Pack up. I'll tell you, Phil, this is an ideal day for hiking. It's gorgeous out here. Yes, we don't get many days with a pleasant breeze and a shade cover like this mm -hmm. from the cl low clouds. Well, tell me a little bit about the Florida Trail. Well, we're in our 23rd year of existence. It all started back a number of years ago when a Jim Kern, our founder, and a uh, businessman in the Miami area, uh, decided uh, after hiking the Appalachian Trail many times that he'd like to see a trail running the full length of the state of Florida. So he organized a group of backpackers and hikers and all his volunteers started building hiking trail. And right now, today, we have over 1,200 miles of trail on the ground in Florida that we have maintained. We're continuing to build new trail and uh, our longest continual segment without, uh, without a break in interruption is 450 miles. Well, where's that? Well, it runs from uh, south of the uh, Ocala National Forest, through the Ocala National Forest, up through the Osceola National Forest, and over to the uh, Apalachicola River. Hmm. Our <laughs> bridging of the Apalachicola River is currently our holdup. I can imagine, that's a big river to go across. 
Is the goal ultimately then to have a trail that goes from where, what, in Miami some area? No, it starts uh, down in the Everglades. Section one is, uh, is our uh, starting uh, section. Is that the one at the Oasis Ranger Station? Yes, it is. It's right. Big Cypress National Preserve. Big Cypress is the name of the section, section mm -hmm. one. And uh, the o Oasis is right in the middle of it. It starts south of there, comes up through there. And uh, section two is open right now, but we're working on section two. Uh, it goes up on both sides of Lake Okeechobee. Uh, we've recently completed the west side. The east side has been open for uh, a number of years. Uh, it follows the Kissimmee River north, and our plans are, what we're trying to, to work out from the Kissimmee River, somewhere in the vicinity of Lake Kissimmee, uh, to branch off to an eastern loop and a western loop, hmm. and then have them join somewhere up in the vicinity of Rodman Dam and wow. continue up and across the panhandle. That's a, that's a, a lifetime of work for well, a lot of people. For a lot like. of people. Ultimately, what we hope is that the uh, the Alabama Hiking Club will connect us with the uh, Appalachian Trail in Georgia, and you'll be able to hike from the Everglades all the way to Maine, to the, to the wow. northern border of the United States. I wonder if it would all eventually become the, they'd rename it the, the Florida-Alabama Appalachian Trail or something. Well, I, uh, I, don't, I don't have any thoughts on that <laughs> matter at all. That's way beyond my, uh, my uh, my responsibilities and really my concern because I have no uh, no desire to through hike a great distance like that. Well, what are we going to do first? Well, uh, we've got the project of building a short bypass uh, trail today, and uh, while we have favorable weather, uh, it would, might be a good idea to get the tools out and go uh, get to that task. Okay. Well, let's go back to the the truck and the trailer and get what we need to get great. started. Chris, we'll, we'll need a flag on this tree to anchor this side of it before we go into the thicket. Okay, it looks kind of thick too. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, we'll have the, the chainsaw team follow us up and they'll cut the limbs and the things that are, are uh, heavy wood that are blocking our path. And the uh, brush cutter team will follow them and they'll come through and clear the, the, the smaller woody plants. Okay. When do we need more flag? Well, we here? ought to have a flag on this tree right here on the left. Okay. And that kind of marks this side of the, of the thicket so that they can see it from either way. How do you determine where to put these trails? It's not just a straight shot through, obviously. Oh, no. We uh, uh, start off with a, a thorough map reconnaissance, and if at all possible, we uh, get aerial photos of the area. And you get a general idea of where you want your trail, and then you the only thing to do is to bust uh, through the brush and hang up the flags to lay out the trail. And as you're going, you try and, I think that tree over there is okay. the, our next stop. You, as you're going through, you try and pick out the most scenic. Here's some deer moss. We'll try and leave that. Uh, you pick out the most scenic route that uh, you can put the trail on. A flag right up here that they'll on be this able to see. Here? Yeah, when they follow us along. That'd probably be a good place for a blaze also. It's kind of a subjective uh, means of doing it. Well, when you're in the woods, you, know, you try to avoid real wet, boggy places, mm -hmm. and you try to, through this way here, uh, you try to avoid uh, well, things like going through a palmetto patch like that where you really don't see anything but the palmettos. You want a place where the sun gets to a little bit, but uh, an open hammock where you can enjoy the trees and the shade is is uh, usually, uh, I guess our next one is that big tree right up there ahead. Okay, we take these things out here? These yeah, well, uh, the, uh, the lopping crew that'll come along behind us, put a flag out here on this so that they'll know they have to, uh, to take all these low-hanging branches down okay. when they come through with the loppers. And our next uh, objective tree will be this one right up here. Put one right there in that, that tree. No, the one behind it, it'll be obscured, that's it. Not 
Might just pull there. another piece of that stuff cheap. We won't worry about that at all. Okay. And then okay, just heading south, right off in this direction. As we walk along here, I just wonder about the, the people that hike through this trail. What, uh, what should they be doing to make sure they're responsible hikers? The old saying of take nothing but pictures and leave nothing but, but, but footprints is the most important thing on any primitive trail. You can walk along and enjoy nature at your right hand and at your left hand, but if you're leaving behind soft drink cans and cigarette papers and uh, your lunch wrappers and a bunch of trash, well, it, it does definitely spoil it for the next person. Do you find much of that? Out here, uh, still. I mean, are people? It seems hard to me, for me to believe that people are still doing that. This is a state park, and we see a lot less of it here because there, many of the hikers will actually carry things, uh, trash that others leave out with them. I think it's another thing too. You got to be kind of safe walking around here. And I'm looking at the looks like a little potholes here. This must be hog damage. Right? These are feral hogs that uh, come in here during the the hot time of year. They don't go out in the prairie. They'll come in where they can get into shade, and you see. Uh, a good sized area here. Some of the hammocks in the park uh, look like uh, in, in October look like they ran a plow through them. They just turn over every bit of soil in a hammock to, uh, to grub for whatever they can find. Yeah. It's Let's amazing. Make walking a little dangerous. It does make it dangerous. You have to ke uh, keep your eye on the, where you're putting your foot all the way. And these old roots that you see like this one here, mm -hmm. uh, they stick up at a strange angle and uh, you can be a little off balance because of the rough terrain and step on one of them and they're always slippery. Is that the biggest danger, hiking in Florida, would you say? Well, to me it's the biggest danger. Uh, some places that, uh, that have hunting, the, uh, the hogs are, are uh, thinned out and it's really not a, a problem at all. Most of the state parks where they do not permit hunting have more feral hogs and uh, it is a problem. Now they trap the hogs in here. They have mm -hmm. let a, a contract out, and every year they take about 800 hogs uh, out of the park. Wow, and they still got all this damage. But there are other th hazards. Uh, you know, you always have to uh, not fear a snake, but you have to be aware that uh, you're in the snake's living room. Uh, yeah. Looks like the, uh, the group is the up group here. Maybe we should get our gloves on and uh, help them join this the trail work. up, okay? I think I might have to have you Take that machete off my pack here. I oh yeah, we'll see if we can do it without cutting the string. Yeah. Okay. And what do we do? Just get the plants that are growing into the trail and blocking the trail and get it down close to the ground. Okay. If you get it close to the ground, you set it back at least a year. If you just clip the part that's hanging in the trail, it probably won't uh, be four to six weeks but what it's growing out into the trail again. We take these out all the way back into here? Way back. Way back. Huh? See, just that part that's leaning is in the is in the trail. Let me hold it back so you can okay. get a swing at it. That's <laughs> right. That's go. got it. Works either way. Huh? Can you do this what once a month? You say? We come out once a month, Chris. Uh, we spend one weekend every month, except for. Uh, usually June, July, and August Yeah, a little hot uh, in Mayaka. We work uh, on some of our trails, we work the year round, but uh, mm -hmm. here in Mayaka, uh, we usually end up in May doing a job that we can do in the woods. And then uh, we start off in September doing something that's in a deep hammock. Okay, well they're getting up ahead of us. Why don't we go back catch and up to them? The and uh, Yeah, we don't want to miss out on any of the fun. <laughs> This is actually pretty uh, strenuous work. You get tired after a day of doing this. Well, it is good exercise. There's, oh, yeah. there's bending to it, there's reaching, yeah, and there's walking, and it really is good exercise. It makes you feel good after a day on the trail. I'm not sure that people fully appreciate the work that you guys do as well. This, uh, this takes a lot of effort. It's all volunteer, right? All volunteers. Yeah. yeah you were saying before we got up here, uh, talking about snakes and things, is that the 
that and hogs. Anything else to be concerned about? There are there ticks. There are ticks out here, I know. But what about the ones that carry like Lyme disease? Is that a problem? In Florida it has yet? not been a problem in Florida. Uh, this particular area of the Florida Trail is not real bad for ticks. Uh, some parts of it, and it's usually in the, the sandy. Oh, look, there's fire ants. Yeah, you've uncovered an <laughs> ant's nest. Now, that's okay. a problem in Florida, I know. That is always a, a problem if you put your foot in it, because yeah. uh, they'll be up to your knee before the first one bites, and then when uh, the, the, they get the signal, they all bite at the same time, and it'll uh, It'll make you get your, your sock and your boot off real fast. Or, you know, if they've really got to you, why, uh, there's nothing to do but to... to what do you uh, do when you're out in the woods and you, you accidentally step on this? Well, you get your boot and your sock off and you brush them off. Yeah. And Is there any way to treat it and if, when you're out hiking? Yes, we have uh, what's called stingies, but that is mm -hmm. uh, that is not necessarily uh, an effective thing for all people. Yeah. Disturb them enough, I think we'll leave them. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave them do that. We'll let it so that the next person along can inadvertently walk into them. Yeah. So we got snakes and we got fire ants and. Well, snakes hogs. are not really a problem. Uh, no. They, uh, if they have the opportunity to get off the trail, I think that any one of them will will. Uh, feel you coming, or sense you coming, uh, smell you coming, and will be well off the trail before you get there. We have uh, seen snakes uh, out on the trail, and we see them uh, not at all infrequently, but when you're moving along with a group like this, uh, you almost never see a snake. Yeah, There's I a guess. great variety. Actually, it's a thrill to see a snake. <laughs> with yeah. the feral hogs in this area, uh, most of the snakes that survive are rather large. You see some some real prime specimens in here because the uh, feral hogs will gobble up a snake. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we uh, head on up here to the trail a little bit. I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, uh, some of the other things that you folks are doing, okay? That's fine.
I noticed on your shirt there, you're the, the Suncoast chapter of the Floral Tra Florida Trail Association. How big is this organization? Well, we have over 5,000 members. The Suncoast chapter has about 1,400 of those five chapters, or those of the 5,000. 1,400? 1,400. Wow. We're the largest of the 12 chapters in the Florida Trail Association by quite a bit. Yeah, that is, uh, that is quite, a, quite a good sized group. And uh, what else do you do besides the trail maintenance work? Well, uh, we do an awful lot of uh, uh, enjoyment of the outdoors. We do a lot of camping, we do a lot of hiking, we have backpack trips in the hot months. We uh, do beach parties and uh, canoe trips. Things and, that are a little cooler. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, and our, we still hike year round, but uh, in the summer our hikes usually start uh, early in the morning and we hike up until lunchtime and then we have lunch together and go on home for the, the heat of the afternoon. Well, you but, know, another thing I noticed is that you've got quite a diversity of ages. You've got people who are probably or perhaps retired and, and then you've got people that are pretty young uh, out here. Interesting mix. Well, uh, if this was, say, a chapter meeting or a fun thing, there would probably be even more young people. Uh, people with uh, young families are involved in uh, little League and, uh, and scouting activities and there's so many activities for the children that uh, they really don't uh, have the opportunity to get out and do a thing like this that they would prefer as much. We have uh, uh, on our work activities a preponderance of people without children or they come back when they're empty nesters. Uh, yeah. when, the, when the kids are off on their own doing their own thing they, they come back. But uh, Yes, there is a there is a great uh, variety. Uh, at our our fun things, we always have uh, activities for the children. Oh yeah. What else are we going to do today, or is that? Uh, That's about it. Uh, we uh, should start heading back and get our tents up. Oh yeah. And we'll catch up with these other rugged-looking volunteers here, <laughs> and uh, we'll let them blaze the way. And uh, yeah, maybe a, a break about this point in time might feel good, huh? Well, we've done a good job on this section of the trail. This is what it's supposed to look like. Well, that's good. Well, let's go. Let's go rest. Well, please don't. Well, this is the workers' campsite. This is a special site that uh, the general public doesn't get to use. Uh, we use this when we're in here working. Uh, and you got all, all means and all sizes all of All uh, means and all tents, sizes. Huh? We have a lady here setting up her uh, little individual tent, her, her backpacking tent that she'll sleep in tonight. But we have people in larger tents. Uh, we have people that sleep in the back of their pickup trucks. We have uh, pop-up campers and uh, uh, the toad type and the ones that uh, ride on the back of a truck. Uh, mm -hmm. Just about any type of camping device that a person finds uh, convenient. Is there any one in particular that's uh, you know, like suited for Florida? Is there, is there a Florida style tent? I would think, you know, I, I've done some camping in Florida, but it seems to me like uh, the ones that have a lot of screens in them are probably the best, particularly this time of year. You definitely want something with good ventilation, but in the catalogs they're listed as uh, as uh, three season tents or four season tents, and really mm -hmm. any uh, three season tent is is more than adequate for camping in Florida. Huh. Here's one of the bigger tents that they're yeah. putting up. This is he uh, looks skilled. Well, it, it's the it's type of thing. Palace. It takes a little bit of practice to put a larger tent up. Yeah. Got a rain fly for it, it looks like. Can yes, anything? that's a rain fly. And if you notice the, the material, it does have a lot of mosquito wind, uh, windows in it, but the, the material itself is, uh, is thin and breathable, and uh, air actually can circulate right through the, the material on the, on the tent. Yeah, I guess you don't go for heavy sleeping bags either in this uh, well, type of an environment. We, uh, our sleeping bags are 
our uh, 20 degree bags, but mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I don't use our bags that often. We find that uh, in the summer, just a sheet is pl completely adequate, and uh, the rest of the year, a sheet and a uh, uh, light blanket will usually yeah. keep you warm at night. And there's your truck. Yeah. The, the truck type. It, it, this is the, just the plain pickup truck with a pad yeah. put in the back and uh, completely uh, uh, storm proof. Dry and comfortable. Yeah. If you have a, uh, a little mosquito bar to put up over the window that's raised, it makes the inside uh, mosquito proof and it opens it for, for even more air to circulate yeah. in. Here's one of the pop up truck campers that uh, yeah. our folks use. Getting herself set up. She gets a little more headroom out of that, right? Uh, yeah, it'll go up about 18 inches, and it's uh, it's got about six foot one of headroom in it when she uh, when she raises the the top, and uh, it has a, a galley in there. And if you, yep, there it goes. There it goes. Now, yeah. Almost. One one knot yep. down. Let me get it for you, Ethel. It's on the sides. There he goes. Crank now it up. You're set. Two of them still locked. That can be the one that's on the side there, I wonder. Okay, Ethel. Interesting, huh? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're about out of time here today, but uh, I brought my van along. And I'd like to maybe uh, hang around tonight with you folks, and maybe we'll get out and do a little more work tomorrow that's and uh, great. tell a few stories about camping. We're definitely planning on working tomorrow, and we're getting ready over here for a big campfire. We'll have a campfire going, and we'll... Uh, Maybe pop a little popcorn on the campfire and we'll sit there and tell some stories.